Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees, and we are harvesting honey. My favorite time of the year when we get to get out in the apiary, pull that honey that's been, uh, you know, gathered and harvested by the bees for the spring. Uh, this is um, this is kind of an interesting time because it's a little warm out today, and we want to make sure that we can uh, do a video like we do every year. Um, there's a couple uh, links in the description below to our prior year's harvest videos. Um, I would say that most of my techniques are, are the same that I'm using here at the uh, Bohemia Apiary on the Eastern Shore. Not all the techniques are the same everywhere you go. Uh, we're a small scale operation, um, maybe uh, in about a thousand pounds we harvest every year. So that's what we're hoping for. We've got uh, a couple different yards to harvest from. What I plan to do on this year's harvest video is to just walk you through fairly quickly the tools and such that I use to harvest honey so that if you're looking to do that in your apiary you know what you need to do uh, again there's lots of different ways to do it uh, but this is just how we do it here at the Bohemian Apiary so let's take a look at the tools that we're going to use for the first part of this video which is pulling the supers let's take a look okay so laid out on the back of my truck I have a couple tools that I'll be using um, most commonly, you know, you got to have your hive tool and your smoker, right? Get your smoker going with your smoker fuel. We're using burlap today. This burns a little longer. Um, a couple of the other things that we're using today is a fume board method. We've got um, some honey bandit and some bee done that we're going to use. It's just spray on, um, non-toxic. Um, it's a spray that essentially clears the supers. So we're going to use that on our fume boards. These are two different style fume boards. It has felt on the bottom, and it either has a corrugated um, uh, top, like you see with felt on the bottom, um, or metal on the top, usually painted dark or black. The sun's gonna hit that, it'll heat up, push the fume down into the supers and push the bees down into the, the lower box uh, or out the front for a bit of time. It doesn't harm the bees, doesn't harm the honey, but it, what it'll do is it'll provide sort of a deterrent. It smells like almonds to me, that's what really what it smells like to me. Uh, once we've got those supers cleared out, we're going to take them, we'll set them up on a stand, we'll blow any additional bees out, doesn't hurt the bees, but it pushes them out of the super. Bring that box over here to the truck, set it on top of one of these uh, lids. These are actually great lids if you have a chance to find a couple of these on, I think the Dant sells them, if they even sell them anymore. They're, they're uh, concave, so the water runs off them, but they're great for when you stack boxes in for the honey to drip to the bottom so you don't have to worry about it getting on the bed of your truck, your cart, or however you're transporting it. We have our screened inner covers, again, to cover the tops of them so the bees don't get back inside them, or, or even an inner, or a top uh, telescoping cover to throw on top. Um, that's really it. These are the tools that we use in the first step of harvesting honey. Let's get to work and get on these supers, get them cleared out, and start to get them back into the, uh, into the honey house to harvest for the second part. Okay, so these are the honey supers that we just pulled off yesterday. So we're gonna go ahead and start to go through them. There's approximately nine frames in each one, um, as you can see here. Um, there's a few bees floating around still in there uh, that'll come up to the top. But we need to get through these supers. Um, we'll pull off probably about, I think we did about 14. There's two inside the shop and about 12 here. We have another three, three more uh, yards to go to pull off probably about the same amount. So we'll end up with, you know, approximately you know, 30, 36 or so supers, um, which is a good good haul for us here at Bohemia Apiary. Okay, we're back in the honey processing room and we're gonna show you the second part of our harvest, which is when we bring those frames back in from the honey supers, or we'll bring all those supers in with all the frames, we're gonna harvest them. We're gonna cut the cappings off and then we're gonna extract the honey out of them and then put it in our tank or our buckets. Uh, let's look at a couple tools that are probably critical for most beekeepers uh, that are harvesting honey, 
Uh, it may not be uh, exactly the tools that you use, but these are the key tools that we use when we harvest honey. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, so the tools we use when we extract honey are uh, pretty common that most beekeepers will use. Uh, we might have a couple different things that we do. We naturally have our sanitation elements, so you know our wipes to kind of clean the surface down, the top surfaces down, uh, making sure that anything that's used that, that passes honey through it, we rinse it really well, we sanitize it, and let it air dry. Um, so there's no residue of any type of uh, uh, chemical on it. We have our rubber gloves. We have our refractometer. So everybody knows what a refractometer is if you're a beekeeper. This helps you gauge the level of moisture that's inside your, um, your honey. So we'll naturally test our honey with the refractometer to ensure that it's within range, uh, typically below 17%. Um, and our, depending on the time of year, your honey can have a little bit more or less moisture in it. We won't get into too much detail on this video about that, but we will test our honey to make sure that it's not above a certain amount so that it will ferment in a bottle or in a bucket or where we, st we store it away. We have a few tools naturally for uncapping. Um, our uncapping knife, this is just a hot knife. We don't really use this that often. I've used it in the past, but I don't typically use it. I'll use just a serrated uh, knife. This is used, done very well for the, through the years for me and uh, it works well for us for uncapping. And we have our uncapping fork, which we'll show you what that's for. And then of course, naturally, I like to clean the frames up, so I always have a hive tool and a sharp knife to cut through any, any um, comb or if I'm doing cut comb or if I'm trying to clean up a frame or something like that, always need to have something there. Uh, and then our, our, our screens, we have a, a fine mesh and then a, a, a normal mesh screen. These are just used for when we're processing our honey out of our tanks, whether it's coming from the uncapping tank or that's coming out of the extractor, we pass it through both of these screens. That's really the only filtration filtration that we do, other than we do have that final screen bag that we put on top of our bottling tank, which you'll see, which allows us to pass it through an even finer micron. I don't really like to have a lot of parts or pieces in my honey. I'd like to have it as clear as possible. Um, I don't wanna filter it too much because I wanna leave some of that natural pollen in it, but it's always good to strain out some of those bee parts and things that you know, bigger pieces of particles that may uh, make it through the process. It's a natural process. We've got a couple buckets. We have a lot of buckets, actually. Uh, so we'll have those ready to go as well. Um, let's take a look at the equipment we're using. Okay, so our setup for equipment is all Maxant based. Um, we've bought this several years back, and it's worked well for us. It's good quality, American-made. Uh, Maxant has had some uh, processing supply challenges over the years, so naturally it's kind of, you know, fallen off a little bit, but we really like the quality product that Maxant makes. Uh, we keep, uh, we've used it year over year. It's good sturdy equipment. Like I said, uh, we're using their MUT, their uncapping tank, which is a, it's a tank that we're going to have all the frames that we're going to uncap down here in the cap uncapping bin that's going to drain out the front. We're going to take those frames once uncapped, put them in our extractor, spin them out, see, and then... We'll move that over and put it into our bottling tank. And naturally anything that does not fit through the bottling tank, we'll put in buckets, of course. Um, this has a strainer up top. So when we're pouring honey into the bottling tank, that's our last filter. I was mentioning to you that micron bag. We're gonna use that as well. This is a 42 gallon tank. Um, and this is a 20, I think this is the 25. I have to count again, I forget. Uh, radial extractor. So uh, again, all of them work very well for us. Uh, this is, these are all products that we paid for, um, full freight and they worked well in our, our honey house. So we're going to continue to use them in the foreseeable future. Let's take a look at a frame and, uh, let's get to work. Okay. So one of the questions that I always get is that how much honey can you harvest in a year? Uh, the average super, the boxes you just looked at, there's about nine frames in there. And if you take a look at the frames here on the bench, some of them have comb that extends out past. This particular one right here is really lined up to the edge of the, the frame. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But that, that's when we probably had about 10 frames in a, in a super. When we have nine frames in a super, they tend to draw it out a little bit more, as you can see right here. And we'll look at a couple of them as well and talk about why that's a good uh, practice to put nine rather than 10 in a super. Uh, let's get to work talking about uh, frames as we cut, them, cut into them. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple different frames, just so you can understand what we're looking at. Um, naturally, as I mentioned before, I like to put nine frames in a super, which is the honey box they go in, and that spaces them out enough that they'll build the comb out wide. This would be an example of one that had a 10 frame super, and this is an example of one that had a, um, uh, a nine frame super. 
So you can see the difference between the two frames and the amount of honey as it goes beyond the, the sides. You can see the thickness of the comb, right? And how much more honey is in this one, the weight of the either two. This is definitely more heavy than this one. Now the question would be, hey, if I'm putting 10 frames in a honey super versus nine, the more uh, honey they put in the nine frame versus the 10 frame, does it make up the difference with the amount of honey you'll get uh, with these uh, ones when there's 10 frames? So the way I like to look at it is if I have um, not only, uh, even if there's an equal amount of honey based on the amount of frames that are in there, the cut I can get out of these frames that have the wider comb built out on them is typically cleaner than if I have to go digging into this one with a comb um, or kind of, you know, wrecking up that, that work that the bees have done to store the honey in and cap it off. Uh, one thing I do want to also talk about is cappings, right? So if we look at a, a frame that's been capped, um, two examples here. This is a frame that's been fully capped. You can notice almost all the cells have been capped. It's 100% on that. Actually, we nicked a few over here, we're opening up, but that's a good frame. The reason for that is the bees will fan that honey once they've deposited it into, you know, they've taken the nectar and they've regurgitated it a few times and deposited it in that honeycomb, and they will fan it to get it below the proper moisture content for storage so it doesn't spoil. And then what they'll do is they'll cap it off with, a, with, a, with honey, I mean, with, a, with a wax. And that will seal in the honey and prevent it from uh, either fermenting or getting uh, going bad over time. That's why honey lasts so long because of the low moisture content. However, occasionally as you're harvesting, you will have frames that don't look like that, that are partially capped. Example like you see here is there's cappings that are open over here on this side. Now this frame I would consider 90% capped. Majority of the frames have been capped and you can even see some of the cells on the, the side over here on the right that look like they're starting to be capped which means that this is, a, this is good enough to be harvested. I don't have to worry about it fermenting. It's gonna be at the proper moisture content. Now, if I had uh, you know, half of my harvest that had frames that were 80 to 75 or even 50% capped, I run the risk of introducing more moisture in my batch, my, my buckets and my bottling tank than I wanna have. So I wanna make sure that they are covered at least 90%. Uh, and if I wanna do a little bit of a shake test, you can also take it and shake it really hard and you can see nothing shakes out of that frame and that just means that it's in its proper state to be harvested so let's go ahead and start to harvest honey uh, one of the other things i will mention occasionally we will get frames this is actually a broken frame that i'm going to try to salvage um, that had a little bit of brood in it there's a little bit of brood in this section over the rest of the honey's capped off but it had brood in it so that brood that's in there i want to try to salvage the, uh, the honey that's on this frame because this frame fell apart as I was pulling it out of the hive. So I'm gonna to try to save that um, naturally. Um, it, it's just another scenario where we've gotta to try to react to what we have and every frame is gonna be different as it comes out of the hive, whether they look perfect or whether they look uh, different and uncapped or capped. So let's get our knives, let's get in the uh, uncapping tank and get these frames uncapped. All right, so we've got our frame to be for our first inaugural frame of 2022 and we're going to set it up on our cut and what I do is I take my serrated knife I start at the top and I just go down that frame running along the frame rails at a slight angle so you can see the wax just cuts away nice clean cut there's a little bit of a uh, uh, you know, cappings that are still left up there. I can use my um, scratcher to open them up. And go with this side. Now these cappings that I have on here are great for making candles and other things because they're nice and clean and pure. It's not like regular wax um, that we have. Let me grab my fork real quick. So when you get where the comb is low, like we've shown here, and this is exactly why I like the thicker comb, because I like to open up those cells so that it will extract properly. You can scratch those surfaces to break up the cappings ever so lightly, not hard, just lightly going across them to open them up. And if there's any on the other side, you're gonna do the same thing, and then you're gonna to get to that honey that's inside those cells. 
Um, there's some dark spots that you see in this frame. What is the dark spot? That's pollen. That's your bee bread for your bees. That's why honey is so good for you because it does have natural pollen in it in the various places where the bees have stored pollen along with the honey. But the majority of that frame as it glistens, you'll see, is full of honey. Let's take that, we'll put that in the extractor. When we set this in the extractor, we're gonna put it so that the back side of the frame, top frame rest is facing out because honeycomb, if you remember, when you look at it, it's angled down. It's angled this direction and this direction. That's so the bees are able to put the honey in their drains to the back of the cell. So when you do the reverse of that, you put it in an extractor standing up and it spins in a centrifugal force, shoots the honey out on the wall at the angle in which it was at. Now I could put it in there this way, just not as efficient, because when you're working against gravity, you're working against the centrifugal force. Um, I always put that with the top bar facing out on this type of extractor. There's different types of extractors that hold frames in different ways. Um, this is just how mine works. So let's put this in the extractor. And we're going to continue to do a couple more frames. Let's do one frame that actually is thicker so you can see the difference of when I harvest the one we showed earlier. This one is in a nine frame box. And you can see how heavy it is and how much. Now the one thing you're going to notice about this is I'm still going to do a clean cut. This is just how I, I work and I'm going to get some honey look like I'm going to lose some honey to this bin below me, but it's going to drain through, which will allow me to uh, recapture that honey in the bucket that comes off this uncapping tank. And you can see as I let my knife do the work, I'm not doing any of the work. I'm letting the, the sole blade of the knife just cut through those cappings. Now you can see this is all full of honey. Now there's different types of honey that's in here. It looks like there's even some of the crystallized honey that's in here. I'm pulling through to see if it's crystallized or what it is. Looks like it is. That's why you want to get to your honey sooner. Um, it's going to go ahead through. And all that honey that goes down, it makes it easier for me to cut a nice clean frame. There's a low spot. I'm going to score those cells up a little bit, and we're good to go. Um, I'll also go back through and Take my, clean up my frame, and the burr comb, so it's nice and ready to go. So when it comes out of the extractor, it's ready to be put right back into a box for the bees to clean up. Let's put this in the frame, in the extractor. Okay, so we're going to continue on cutting frames open, uncapping. We'll get through these. We'll make sure we have enough to fill the extractor. We'll show you that step, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so extraction. This is the uh, centrifuge we talked about. It allows you to extract the honey out from the frames. Uh, as I mentioned before, and I confirm this is a 20 frame extractor. I should have known that. I, for some reason, I thought it was 25, so um, my brain gets going uh, when I do these videos, and sometimes I just misspeak a few times. But the 20 frames are put in here um, with the top bars facing out, as we mentioned before, because the comb will shoot the, the honey out on the walls. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start this up. Now, when I start any extractor, I always start it with it not tightened. This just allows it to build up to the speed because there is honey that's being dripped into the bottom now. And the key with extractors that would make your life simpler um, is to not rush to get that spinning. You will build it up to speed and it will spin for a good 5-10 minutes. Um, but the key is to let it get to that point. Let the honey that's dripping uh, down stabilize the bottom and then work your way up to where there is a, um, an even spin so it doesn't jump around, essentially. You could bolt it to the floor. Ours is not bolted to the floor, so unfortunately we have to take this technique of gradually building out. And if it starts to rock a little bit to where we're um, not comfortable and it hasn't balanced itself out, we'll turn it back down again. So right now I'm watching some honey, light honey to flash on the walls. Um, let's take a look inside there and show you what that looks like. 
Okay, so if you look down on the walls down there, you'll see the honey flying out. And this is what the extraction process does. So every minute or so, I'll tighten it a little bit more to get a good speed on it. You honestly don't need to have a, a really rapid uh, spin. You just need to have a good enough spin to push that honey out of the frames onto the wall. We'll do one or two more turns just to tighten it up. All right, let's put our lid on and let it do its work. Okay, so this has been running for about five minutes or so. Um, one thing you wanna make sure you do, um, unless you have a deeper cavity at the bottom of your extractor, uh, you wanna make sure you open that honey gate at some point during that extraction process. The reason for that is that as the honey rises in the bin in the bottom, it starts to get up to where the frames are and the spinning rack and that could cream your honey. It could basically cream up or put air in the honey. So by opening the uh, honey gate, you're allowing the honey that's settling on the bottom that's been dripping down the sides to flow out into your bucket um, rather than it sitting in the extractor and putting strain on the, the spinning extractor or you see on top, okay? So let's go ahead and open that honey gate and see 2022 inaugural honey pool. Here we go. Here we go. Beautiful golden honey. Now again, we're using a double screen to filter out any of the remaining particulates. You'll see some wax cappings falling out. Very few uh, parts of bees naturally uh, or anything else uh, in here. There may be some bits of pollen. But uh, for the most part, the honey is fairly clear, but we're gonna go through that double screen before we pour it into the bottle of the tank. And you keep an eye on your strainer so it doesn't tilt, because the last thing you wanna do is have honey down inside your bucket and, um, and it to spill over. So just keep an eye on that as it, uh, as it flows out. Look at that beautiful golden honey. Okay, so in our uncapping tank, we have all of our, un our cappings, as you can see here. We've got all this honey that's been dripping down that we're gonna also screen and pour in our bottling tank. So let's go ahead and open that up and capture all that honey as well. Okay, so the last step for us in our honey processing is we have a bottling tank that we start off filling We'll eventually end up in buckets just because we only have 42 gallons that this bottling tank holds and we'll be bottling right away. Maxant makes, uh, I think, one size larger than this. I think it may be like a 55 or 60 gallon. I don't recall. I need to I can check on that. Um, but this tank has been great because it's jacketed. It's kept at about 75 degrees um, in the jacketed, water jacketed. It keeps the honey flowing. So even as we progress into the end of the summer and into the fall, before we've tapped into some of our bucket reserves, you know, we can tap and bottle right out of this tank very easily and it's kept at a sort of a room temperature. We don't heat it much above that because we don't want to break down the quality of, of the honey. And we don't pasteurize it over 120 degrees. We don't do anything like that. So it's helpful uh, to kind of try to keep it in its most natural state. We're gonna take that bucket that we filled here um, that five gallon bucket. Lift it up and dump it in. And there's a mesh screen on the top that we use as a final screening. It just gets any of the 
finer particulates out of it, out of this. And we don't even need to empty this bucket because it's going right back in the line again to be filled up with more honey. Yep. Well, friends, there you have it. We've uh, gotten through some honey processing. We've got a lot more to do. Uh, we walked you through what it took to get uh, the bees out of the honey supers, the boxes. Uh, we talked about how to look at frames to ensure that they are ready to be harvested, making sure they're fully capped or 90% or more capped. And if you need to do the shape test, we talked about actually uncapping those frames showed you the equipment that we use, uh, we showed you the process all the way through, through the straining process, and then pouring it into our bottling tank. Um, really that's it, that's here at Bohemia Avery, that's how we harvest honey. We don't have a large operation, we have some pretty good equipment uh, from Maxan, and we have our uh, time, and we've got some tools that we typically, a beekeeper would use, that you could use even as a hobbyist beekeeper. You don't need to worry about having all this equipment. The bottling tank's not necessary. The extractor is, is fairly necessary, but you don't need a high-end extractor. You can get a small manual one. The uncapping tank can be made. There's several plans online on how to make one. I'll put some links in the description below to some of the tools as a hobbyist beekeeper that if you want to get started, you could get, and you don't need to necessarily have this large equipment. But if you move into a sideliner role where you have 10 or more hives or honey hives and you're, and you're harvesting a good amount of honey each year uh, and growing, then you may want to invest in some of this equipment. Take that money that you may get from selling your honey and invest it back into your honey processing. It will pay off in the long run uh, to have good quality, long-lasting equipment to get you through season after season. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to uh, subscribe, like, share, comment below if you enjoy these videos about how we manage bees here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland and our uh, operations here at Bohemian Apiary. Uh, we love to get your comments. We try to respond to as many as we can, but definitely enjoy uh, even the non-beekeeper that just enjoys watching the process. So please comment below. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out tremendously. If you feel so obliged, hit that heart button down there. Give us a quick donation or pick up a bottle of honey on our store at bohemiabees.com. We would have, we'll have the 2022 harvest here very shortly in the next week or so until we, when we get through all the honey processing. So make sure you get a bottle of that because remember, Honey is different from region to region, apiary to apiary, season to season. Um, so it, make sure you get um, the, the honey uh, that you like, uh, or just get a variety of honey, because we all love honey here. I'm sure you like honey. Thanks for all you do to support Bohemia Apiary as we've grown over the years. Um, I'm humbled by all the support, by the family and friends, and just the onlookers that have joined us in the social media platforms. Thanks again. Remember, here at Bohemia Apiary, Beekeeping for us is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your honey season.